All right, welcome to Sonoma Sight Show, recorded at Grim Reaper Studios, located somewhere at the base of the beautiful Blue Mountains in eastern Oregon. I'm your host, Les the Snowman Kinnear. And tonight, we have a very special in-studio guest, Cousin Kurt. Welcome to the show, Kurt Simmons. Thank you very much for having me. It's yeah. not quite nighttime, do you say that every time? Yeah, always. This evening. Yeah, it just feels right, because yeah. it's a show, and you want, you know... I want people to think I'm up late having fun. Yeah. Well, we are. Kind of. Nope. Yeah. I'm supposed to fade that out. So normally I like to, um, I'll read stupid stuff like silly news or, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I thought, you know, since we are cousins and um, we have so many stories that I don't really need to do uh, all that other stuff. I think we're just going to get into the interview. And I actually owe you this because... When I started doing podcasting, I was doing just the audio stuff, and um, which is a lot of fun. And I was finding people to interview, and but I was brand new at it. And I interviewed you, and I did like twenty six minutes and dumped you, Be- like okay, gotta go because yeah. I had had one too many drinks. And um, I remember, yeah, I, yeah, I stayed sober, and I was so super excited. Oh, you were on it. fire too, yeah. And uh, I was right in the middle of my second or third story, and I was like, all right, and the music keyed up, and we were done. Yeah, that was uh, just all bad on my part. Was it episode two or three? Yeah, in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was good. It was in my so, shop. So, oh, yeah. So here you are. You're mm-hmm. back, back in uh, in our hometown or my hometown or the town that we both used to live in at once together. Mm-hmm. Um, and so did your mother. We've had all of our family lived here at one point or another. But um, and you're here for work purposes. But uh, I mean. With that, let's just jump into what's going on new in your life. Now, we did kind of talk a little bit about law enforcement and stuff, but I think let's start with uh, where you're at uh, with law enforcement right now. Like, what's happening? Well, uh, about three weeks ago, I decided it was time. Uh, As you know, my wife moved to, well, we moved to Corvallis. We bought a house in Corvallis, left, sold our house in Madras, and got a really neat house right by OSU. the college there and she got a good job and uh, I was going to try and work another two or three years and do the commute thing and it just doesn't work and uh, it's really difficult Um, in some ways it's difficult but I have been telling people if I could do it over again marriage I might have (laughs) moved to the other side of town after we first got married because we have really good weekends together right right if you know what I mean sure so that being said, uh, so I had I hit my 25 years in uh, PERS eligible in law enforcement, Oregon, a couple years ago, and I really was going to try and do 30, and uh, just didn't work out. I worked for a kind of a, a county that's sort of fading off into whatever land, and um, I had a good 18 and a half year run in Jefferson County, and uh, a couple weeks ago, I did what everybody dreams of doing, and I told the guy to take this job and shove it. I was trying to get have I was trying to go earlier than I really needed to, but uh they think they're sticking it to me and I had to give 45 day notice <laughs> and I will have yeah, 29 years in total uh That's... and 27 and a month in PERS and just looking forward to to our next chapter um and just trying to kind of not be so negative about how I'm leaving it. And right. I mean, it is an accomplishment. We've talked about this off air and with my friends and everybody knows what I've done and colleagues are here. So this, I'm here in Pendleton cause it's a director's meeting that we have every two months. And it's one of the best things that we do. We all get together. There's 34 directors and then another 25, 30 people come and um, basically runs parole and probation and decision-making. And I've been going to it since 06 and uh, this will be my last wow. one. And it happens to be here in Pendleton. So I'm excited and, um, I knew you were, uh, I mean, other the stars than, are aligned. Uh, yeah. I was going to say other than everybody lining up out there to be on your podcast, I figured yeah. I, I would just come in and do it and have a glass of wine with you. Yeah. So, well, yeah. it worked out perfect. Yeah. And we can make up for that last one. I've gotten a couple of these under my belt. They're still rough around the edges, but mm-hmm. what the hell? Super um, fun. So, I mean, it's hard for me to believe, like you said, you were in Jefferson County for the 18 and a half mm-hmm, years, yep. but in my mind, you still, it was, you were just, you were just here, like living here. Like we, I, I still go by your old house Yeah, and there's no way that it's been that long, but you, you want to know something else on top of that? This will blow your mind. I was here five years and like two months. 
That's it. Yeah. I was but here. it feels like we all grew up here. Oh, I know. And, you know, and Pendleton is a great town. I yeah. remember my wife even saying, who was still mad that we ever left here, it's like, that's a town we could retire in. You right. know, it's, it's funny coming down into the, uh, you know, the, coming down into Pendleton today and just thinking about memories and not a lot has changed, but you do see some things. I saw apartments, great view of the prison. That's going to look yep. good. Mm. Um, but, you know, it might be a good cheap place to live. Um, I just, no, no, it was an easy place to live. And I always said, you could be in Pendleton, you'd be at a stoplight, and someone next to you in a car would start talking to you. <laughs> you like, how's your day going? You know, and, and, Pendle- yeah. or, and Madras is not like that. But, yeah, we were only here. I was here a little over five years from, yeah, 99 to 2004. And then I went to, uh, yeah, Madras and moved up real quick and became the director. And, yeah, just I'm ready to move on, though. I'm ready to. I know it seems weird, and some people don't believe it, including my family. I mean, it's I'm 52 years old, and I'm retiring. That's and everyone's so like, sick. What are you doing next? What are you doing next? And I just don't know. I mean, I got I have a little foot issue, so I'm going to get that fixed after a few years. You know, it's been a hurting for a while. And then, I don't know, I got a packet at the country club, the golf country club. Ooh. I'm going to maybe check that out. Um, and I don't know. I'm, I like, enjoy walking my wife to work when I'm there and when she has to work. And we got another new puppy, and it's like. I guess I could do anything I want, really. There's no way you won't be busy. No. Knowing you, you mm-hmm. will be busy. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and that's scary because gosh only knows what you're going to come up with uh, to do. I know. <laughs> I know. And I love projects. That's always been yeah. kind of my passion. I love tinkering around the house and can't wait to get my room kind of looking like this minus the podcast setup. Right. Well, you know. I don't know. We'll but, see. Uh, yeah. No, I'm just, I'm really looking so, forward to it. It hasn't really sunk in yet. Um I did see a gal when I was checking in the motel a little bit. I goes, I thought you retired. I'm like, geez, you know, no, I got three weeks left. Come yeah. on. Uh, That's usually what happens. When yeah. somebody says they're going to retire, I think most of us in the office. Yeah. We're well, just like, you're dead to me. Yeah. That's how my staff is right now. <laughs> and my bosses <laughs> and me. So well, it's, I'm, it's not a secret. Um, I mean, I've wiped, oh, wiped out everything. I, <clears throat> there's nothing in my office left. They could come over and say, here you go. And I'd be like, okay, see ya. That's funny. Um, but, yeah. Well, you know, on to the next chapter. And mm-hmm. uh, what a career, though. That's wild to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's hard for me to think that we're at that age now where you've had this, you're already done with mm-hmm. one whole career. Mm-hmm. And um, it's interesting to, uh, yeah, look at, know someone who picked a career and stuck with it. You know, found a passion early, mm-hmm. right? Regardless of the negatives or whatever, you found something. It's so hard it was hard for me to do. And I think this generation, my, or, you know, generations after it's hard mm-hmm. to do. We just, we want to kind of try a little bit of everything and you stuck it with it. And yeah. that's just, I think something that we won't see as much. Yeah. I worked at, you know, five, four or five different counties. Um, I bounced around a little bit, but really the same, right. the same issues in Pendleton or in Madras as right. in Salem as in Dallas as in, uh, you know, and it's there's bad guys everywhere, but that's who I liked working with and why I always did it. it, it yeah. I enjoy people and I enjoy people's stories, and I, that's why I did it. Um, but I'm only 52, so I could be I could do something totally else, a whole so, new, a whole new career, I guess, if I want. I mean, you go work for the feds, and they have furs, not purrs, but furs. I'm not sure if I want to do anything law enforcement related. Yeah, I kind of ready to try some other things. Okay, well, we can always get back. Speaking of law enforcement, I mean, uh, we did have a private investigating business once. Wow. Went by the name of Ramor Personal Investigations. Yeah. And, um, you know, you could always get back into that. I mean, I hear it's easy to become a private investigator. Yeah, I really didn't do much in our with our company other than I was the driver Yeah. Um, when, yeah. We had, when we went and got the cars. Um, and I kind of found where the cars were. Um, yeah. Well, we don't need to get into details, yeah. but I mean, I think the important part is that, um, I recently spoke at a funeral and there were also law enforcement people in the, in the audience there, mm-hmm. but, and I told a story about me wanting to be a private investigator just for some odd reason. I came up with the idea and I thought I have somebody in law enforcement to, to mentor me and guide me and help me. <clears throat> yeah. And, um, and then I'll, you know, and somehow I did get my license or whatever. And, and so I, then it was like, well, now what? And um, 
we're in the middle of nowhere. You don't really need that over here. Do you remember one of the things you were like, Kurt, we, like uh, pe- people are going through divorce and we could be hired to um, monitor or watch the other people? Yes. You know, and I was like, well, I guess we could. I mean, there's what, 15,000, 20,000 people here. You know what, though? I know someone who did it in this county. Really? That's what gave me the idea. Oh. And I was thinking, but there was already a private investigator, too, actually. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they didn't need three and four. Yeah. But we did we did get uh, a couple of cases. I, I did get some calls. We did get some. But then I had this brainy idea. I was talking to a guy that owned a little used car lot, and it was his funeral that I was at, Ron Durkis. And he heard me talking about it. And he goes, well, you, you, you know, like investigate, you can find stuff. And so then we started talking. And I said, well, I'll tell you what, you know, if I find your car, mm-hmm. he's like, I'll give you a hundred bucks or whatever it was. Yeah. I don't know. And I'm like, and then that, then it was just to find it. And then, so then I think I did, you know, you, we did one or two of those or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, makes the story sound good. Mm-hmm. And then um, he said, well, I'll give you a hundred <laughs> I'll give you 150 if you just take these keys and bring it back. <laughs> what? And I was like, well, that, all right. We made it, man. Big leagues. <laughs> We're going to start. This is going to be a bread and uh, potatoes. So yeah. so we go, we, we jumping ahead, we did find the vehicle in, in question. And we had the keys, so we had the idea of going out bright and early on a weekend morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Feel free to, as I recall, it was a beautiful morning. Yes. The sun was, was just, oh. And we went to this home and, you know, when we saw the car and I, we did knock. Well, of, or yeah. you did, you. There's, the car wasn't parked in front of the house. The car was parked a little ways away. We, in oh, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. in Athena or what's Weston. Little t- Weston. So it wasn't hard to find. No. But it was a few houses away. And uh, we knocked right. to warn them that who we were, we were Remore personal investigators working for the company yeah. and they were delinquent on their payments <laughs> and they said everything, you know, God, it sounded and, good. and then I think you took over talking and she said she wasn't going to give us the keys and we're like, we don't need the keys. And I jumped in, but do you remember the front, uh, the hood, there was like a chain wrapped around the front wheel well holding the hood closed. Yeah, it was. And all I thought about, we have, to, we had to drive that all the way back to Pendleton. On a on a highway, yeah. you know, a fifty five mile uh-huh. an hour highway, but yeah. Um, and I felt bad. There was kids, toys, <laughs> toys and stuff in there. And so you're saying that you took this car and it had kids' toys. Yeah. And... Well, I mean, I we we took it all out, packed oh. it up nicely, and left it on our porch, and then took it. Okay. Now here's how I remember it. At, up to I'll stop you there. Here's how I remember it. I remember pulling up and going, well, you know. Yeah, if you don't mind, <laughs> kind of that awkward silence where you were like, okay, well, you want me to? And as I recall, you were like, well, all right. And you went up to the door and you talked to her. <laughs> I don't remember talking to her. Um, but what I remember most is just you decisively saying, let's go. And you got in the car and then I was behind you. And, and, and do you remember how much how we were beaming driving? How far is that, Weston, from yeah, here? It's, 10 miles? Uh, it's 18 miles from here, Weston to we, we Pendleton. We were beaming like we were. Dumb and Dumber or mm-hmm. whoever. No, I well, felt like Magnum P.I. Well, I was thinking, yeah, uh, somewhere in between Dumb and Dumber and Magnum P.I. Yeah. But boy, we thought we were, I mean, God. We Dog were the bounty hunter. Big but, time. I mean, it, it felt real. And yeah. I loved it. And I can see your head. And mm-hmm. the, again, the sun, it was morning and the, the sun was coming yeah. down on the back of your head. And I think the car kind of. It was about as hot, hot as it is in here right now. It was yeah. pretty warm. Yeah, with AC's out in the studio, <laughs> but it is Grim Reaper Studios, so it's yeah. hot as hell. Yeah, that's true. So do, you don't still have your investi- personal investigation license with your new job or anything, do you? No, I've been banned. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, fraudulent. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I went inactive and left it inactive, but... That was at um, the same time we were real estate uh, people. I didn't want to get into our real estate. property. Yeah. I yep. just that, we found that property and probably through Remore, probably. Yeah, it was. I mean, it made you a lot of money. It did. You know, it made me eighty five thousand dollars. Yeah, I got a motorcycle. Yeah, out. I traded your uh, share, my for share, a, for a seventeen hundred dollar motorcycle. Yeah, it's the first time that the landlord called <laughs> and said, 
can you come down here and fix the plumbing? And I went down there and I made it worse and water went everywhere. And then she told me, can you not cash the check? I said, I'm out of this. No way. Yeah. Yeah. It was. And they, Kurt they, was like, okay, yeah. you know, yeah. and that's where I step in because of my work and I have compassion and empathy for people. So what I did is let them live. You their, really do actually. live them, let them live there for a while. And, um, work out their marriage and their kids issues and um, then they moved out next people moved in and literally lived there paid my mortgage for the whole 15 yeah. years and uh, then had a problem with them at the end and then and then sold the house to roundup association i think yeah um which we that... after, right after i fixed it up too i spent about seven grand fixing it up after those people That's moved right. out we came over here every weekend had a great time with the family fixing it up it was right down there by the roundup grounds and I loved the little house. I had visions of telling Rebecca, maybe we could retire in this little house. And shit. They, <laughs> they bought it and tore it down immediately. <laughs> yeah, immediately. Yeah. And, and, and I remember, and maybe I got this wrong, but when we bought it, we talked about that. We were like, well, this is next to the Roundup Grounds. They're going to buy this eventually. A hotel. Yeah, we heard a hotel. So yeah. we thought we were, what'd again. We what did we pay for it? Uh, 40. 40 three, even. 40? 40 even with 3,000 down. At nine percent interest. Yeah. So that's the fifteen hundred each. Yeah. And you had that motorcycle. Right? Yeah. So that motorcycle. <laughs> but in my defense, it was a really cool motorcycle. Yeah. Nineteen eighty three Honda V forty five Magna. And yeah. It's the it was the seven, seven fifty or seven hundred. They come yeah. in. They came in six fifty. It was the bigger one. Was it purple? It's purple. But yeah. this thing hauled. Yeah. Ass. Good good connection too on where i got that i got that in salem from a guy do you remember wes kilgore that yep. lived in the hair and you know three years ago a couple years ago he passed away yeah of als so that was sad but yeah he set me up with that motorcycle through a friend and then i ended up getting his after i got rid of that one i got his motorcycle from him at uh mm-hmm. on a wheel and dealing um, and i just I, I i that was an st 1100 the one i got from him and the red a, one yeah an st 1300 just passed me a little bit ago and that was the best bike I've ever owned. It was the really? ST, hands down. And I had, and I, so then on the way here, I counted how many bikes I've had. I've had seven. Nailed. I've had two Harleys. Yeah. Uh, uh, Off road. Remember when I moved from here and then I came all the way back here and I bought that dual sport? Yep. I've had two Suzuki's. I've had, was that a Honda or two Hondas? And two was, Hondas. was that a Suzuki? That was a Honda. Oh, that was a Honda? Okay. I've had two and one. And then, uh, yeah, I had a Shadow. Yeah, Honda. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I haven't had it for, I haven't had a bike. My last one was another Harley. Yeah, um, but what did you think of the V Rod? Because you're one. Oh, of the few I had pe- a, yeah, I had a Vought you're V-Rod. one of the p- few people I know that owned a V Rod. It was overpriced and too much power for as little as it was. Right. And I think I, I, I think I went like I could go 130 or 40 <laughs> on that ST. I wouldn't even go 100 on that V-Rod. Just uh, you would just shake. Yeah. And the, the wheel was as wide as its desk. Right. And it was known for the, it's got the widest tire of Harley, and it was too expensive, and I sold it for, I, it just sat in my garage, and the kids were young, and I'd say, don't even get close to it, and it just stressed me out. So right. I did fix it up, because we were going to go on a big motorcycle ride to Sturgis. I had a, I put everything on it, and we were going to go. And I had to cancel because a friend of mine uh, had a tragedy in their family, and I had to stay back for uh, the memorial service. So mm-hmm. I didn't. I didn't go. So yeah. crazy times. Motorcycles—they're so fun. I love all of them, actually. I mean, I've had Harley's too, but I like all of them. I don't care what brand it is, to be honest. If they—if yeah. you can start it and we can ride it, it's mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. A scooters. I have two two mopeds. Where are they? Uh, they're in the uh, cargo box, oh. the camp box, uh-huh. and they're, I love them. I mean, and sometimes I just get on them and just go up the street and back. I just mm-hmm. like that they're, you know, it's just fun to have one. I I would like to get another bike someday, but not right now. Yeah. I'm downsizing, and it's been a long road, and now we're down to just about where we're pretty mobile and mm-hmm. and can hit the road if we need to, so if I break any laws. so Yeah, now we have our big trucks. Yeah, we both have matching trucks, mm-hmm. giant trucks at at our age mm-hmm. and when i get in and out of it i curse myself yeah because i i haven't got a good routine yet handled top slide now i'm the leather's getting screwed up yeah you know your truck's newer than mine um i don't know i can't tell if yours is high taller than mine or not i don't think so 
I need to sell mine if anybody wants a 2013 yeah, Denali. It. Uh, it's been uh, deleted, and that was expensive to do and illegal, but <laughs> who cares? Who's... I'm retiring. I, it went from thir- 11, 12, 13 miles to the gallon to like 22, 25. It's insane. Six-inch lift. Um, it's, it's an awesome truck. brand I, new tires on it. Yeah. Uh, I just, I'm moving to the valley, and you don't really whip around Walmart in, in this big truck, especially over there. Um, no. Nope. I do get a lot of funny looks when I'm over there because I have that big jacked up truck with all my Grateful Dead stickers on the back of it. Yeah. So people are confused, which they're very confused, especially if they'd like, isn't that Kurt? Some of these law enforcement. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. So but before we get out of the motorcycles and stuff, let's talk about, and I think we need to, and I don't, if you want to get upset about it, you can, you can be emotional on this show. Okay. The caddy. Your Cadillac. Let's talk about it. Yeah. One of the a, finest cars. That's a tough one. Yeah. Finest so. cars I've ever known. Yeah. And I have a picture of it on my wall, actually. I loved it so much. And it was Where? supposed to be willed to me. That's that's your back in oh the Oh, my right gosh. On the right? On the bottom? Yeah. yeah. Holy crap. So. I didn't notice that. I didn't notice. So, yeah. This 60, thing. 63 hmm. Caddy. I found on Craigslist, let's just throw numbers out, 10 years ago. Um, and I bought it. It had 63,000 miles on it. I got it towed over to Madras from Dallas, Oregon. And it didn't even have any problems after I got it towed. I, I couldn't start it in Dallas, and I got it towed. And um, <laughs> it yeah. didn't start it up after that. Huh? Started right up. Well, over in Dallas, the uh, the the uh, pedal stuck and it was like i don't know if it was just because it's wet which that's one of the things we're gonna have to get i'm gonna have to get used to over there yeah <laughs> uh, is the weather but uh it was fine then i i put maybe a thousand into it and just yeah it was my dream car i maybe i can do it again um because you've had 19, multiple cadillacs i've had a few but it was an older one with the the large fins in the back um it was 19 and a half feet <sighs> Had f- five uh, cigarette lighters. That's important. Um, yes. I mean, it, it was great. And then the coolest thing about it, though, is the guy who bought it from me. I think I've told you this. I was at this director's meeting in March um, that, for work uh, right before I went to Tennessee. And he had said, he would sent me photos once in a while of fixing it up. And he said, hey, if you're ever in town, look me up. I was two miles at the meeting from where he lived. And he said, come over. And so I went over there, and next thing I know, him and I are driving the Cadillac on the freaking highway and driving it around. And he put it, souped it up, where if you gas it, it's like, you know, a lot of power. But everything inside of it was the same. It was a little dirtier. He had a little grease in it, like he does a lot of work on it. But, yeah, he's put about 10 grand into it. It was a mint condition, though, the body, I thought. I mean, the clear coat was coming off a little bit, Uh but... Other than that, I mean, when you looked at it, you're like, damn, I, I would love to drive that vehicle yeah. around. It, so It, it was yeah. good. It just it, uh, it broke down on me on the way home from work, and I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. Someone told me it was a head gasket. We were getting ready to move, and I was like, what am I going to do? Right. And, I mean, I just sold it, and I can get another one. That's right. I think. Well, right? I did the same thing. I bought a... I bought a pickup from Central Oregon down where you were living, and I, I paid way too much money for the pickup, and then I put a whole bunch more money into it. But the, it's the only car I've ever made money on, when I sold it, the only car. The brown one. The fifty. Oh God, what was it? It was a fifty-one. Okay. Pickup, and I had the LS conversion done, and this thing was oh, yeah. sick, and uh, I actually made money on it. Wow. And that guy, he came and got it and drove it from here to San Francisco and from. Some, then back to Buffalo, New York. Have you stayed in touch with him? I, I did for a long time. We yeah. haven't in a while. He's a tattoo artist. Um, but what the cool part was is I got him in touch with the guy that built the car for me. And then those guys talk a lot because since, like your guy, since I sold it to him, he um, put a bunch of money into it and did a bunch of other things that I didn't do. But So also to finish the story about my Cadillac, uh, I, I spent our first Christmas in our house in Corvallis. And... Uh, I thought for sure I thought for sure that was a big setup. I thought my wife found somebody to buy my car and then held this secret and was probably negotiating with her 
as he's fixing it up. And then I swear on my life, I thought it was going to roll up Christmas morning or on my birthday up on my street. And it, and it, 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 it no, not. it didn't. It, it didn't. Not. And then, uh, and I told the guy that story and he just laughed like, mm. I think, he, I think, well, he's like us though. He's probably about ready to say, well, do you want it? And I'll just get my money back. Yeah. But no, I really thought, you know, like I thought it'd be like that. Some of those was it MTV show or something where they steal the car and fix it yeah, up. Yeah, there and was. Then yeah, I don't remember what it's it. called. I, but no, I want that. I would love that. That would feel so cool. Yeah, but no, I well, got a toolbox. It's not. And I like my toolbox. <laughs> it's you never know. No, you never know. Yeah, I think yeah. I did. No, I just was hoping. Yeah, I don't think I think I'm done with the hot rods and the the older cars. Do you ever hear from the guy that bought your green Chevy in Japan? No. No, oh, that's weird. It's covered in Pokemon somewhere <laughs> in Japan, you know, because, uh, I mean, I, it was a marketing company that bought it. So I'm yeah. assuming that they're doing that. But um, all right. Well, now let's this is a good segue to I know another topic that's easy for you to talk about. Mm-hmm. We'd need another hour. Music. Mm-hmm. You love music. I absolutely. Love you. Music. I don't know too many people that I can say don't that love music more than you. Mm-hmm. So. Um, and then of course, you know, I do too, and played a little bit of music and, um, you know, a family musician, but, and, um, so <laughs> law enforcement, <laughs> <laughs> you got music. I got, yeah. yeah. Um, oh yeah. DW. That's... Yeah. No, I, I wish I could play the guitar. I've been trying to dabble in learning it. Um, lately you heard me, I tried to impress you, but I didn't get it. Oh, that's pretty good. I got nothing from you. So I put it away. Um, but I, you know, I know you got grandpa's fiddle and all of his stuff. Um, <laughs> well, that's not, we don't need to get into but, that. But, um, well, I, I absolutely, you asked me today and I was like, Hey, you should do an intro. What's your genre? And I'm like, I like literally anything. I love live music. I love all music. And it's just, to me, it is, it is probably the only thing worldwide that, it, that there's communication. That's not a fight. Right. You know, in a weird way, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's unbelievable. And I, I have done some, even recently, God, I went, my, but my buddy, Eric and I just went to Tennessee to the Reimer, uh, auditorium, auditorium, the original. Yeah. yeah and saw, uh, grateful dead two nights in a row. Uh, well, Bob Weir, um, two nights in a row. I mean, we just went all the way there just to do that. And I'm going to put in, when I post this show, when editing, I'm going to put that picture you took, which is like, yeah, beautiful. Like you, you yeah. still have that. I do, and actually, um, last night I bought a. I bought. Um, I don't know if you know. There's a famous, the famous Grateful Dead is May eighth, seventy seven, at Cornell University. Last night was May eighth, and they did. They were at Cornell again for their. This is their last tour, Dead and Company, mm-hmm. and it was four hours. It was phenomenal. But then I got on his Instagram, and there was a picture that looked just like mine from Reimer, and wow. I think it. I think it's his background now. But not my photo. But that place it's still a beautiful photo. That place. Have you been to Nashville? No. Um, no. Interesting, busy, loud. It's it's great. Um, it was cold, but uh, we went there. Took our families. It was fun. But we went there for a reason. It was for music. Um, yeah. But yeah, just absolutely. Uh, well, and I, when I was thinking of topics, I was thinking like, what I know, you know, music has came to my mind with you. You go to a lot of concerts. You always have. Mm-hmm. Um, you probably got you know. So my thought is favorite concert, favorite band. Start nailing them. What? Whoa. Yeah. No. Does any concert stand out? Probably that, just because it's in my head recent. Yeah. Um, I know. I know. It's hard, especially if you've gone to a lot. I. Yeah. Oh, man. I didn't think. And Grateful Dead is your favorite band? I don't know. I mean. Because I've also heard your playlist before. Yeah, and, and I, don't it, have a, I don't have a lot of Grateful Dead on there. Well, no, I just mean you're all over the place. Just yeah. so am I. Well, on my way here, I was listening to Highwayman uh, and Pandora, and I was like, man, every song I was saving, you know, thumbing yeah. up, thumbing up. And But I've also been really into, for some reason, uh, oh, oh, um, well, let me just look. Yeah. Um, uh, you know what's weird? And it's because this gal died. Every time someone dies, I get into their music. Have you ever noticed that? Oh. Fleetwood Mac? Oh. When the gal uh. died? I haven't stopped okay. listening to Fleetwood Mac. Prince, when he died, I listened to it. I haven't stopped mm. listening to Tom Petty for three years. Right. Can you believe that's been three years already? I know. I know. Um, 
And, you know, uh, oh, because we were there I, uh, in Reimer, I've been listening to Hank Williams Radio, orig- Senior, mm-hmm. and because there's, it's weird, they will not talk about Hank Williams Senior. And I know songs that Junior does about he's kicked out of the Grand Old Opry right. and it hurt his feelings, and I'm like, I just used to sing it and listen to it. I didn't know what it meant. Right. It was because he it's never real. showed up for his shows. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, uh, it, yeah, there's a lot to it, but, um, yeah, I don't know, 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, What's the first one on there? Oh. Yeah, Great. Fleetwood Mac. That, yeah. Okay, so uh, interestingly enough, you would say that my my wife, her favorite band is Fleetwood Mac, mm-hmm. and she listens to them every morning. And um, uh, you can go your own way. Uh, yep. So I know a lot of the songs myself, and so my dad, who's also into music, he recommended a show on Netflix called um, Daisy and the Six, Daisy Jones and the Six. And I usually don't like band movies. I, I mean, I've seen a bunch of them. So to me, I already kind of, but shit, this one was really good. I got hooked in it and I thought it was really good. And they say that it's loosely based on Fleetwood Mac kind of, or inspired by that. But, my favorite, um, my favorite part of that, that series is when they went to Hawaii and the dead was, they were pl- opening for the dead. Yeah. I've, I've, I've been so watching So you've it. been watching it. Yeah. Acting's not the greatest. There's some weak spots, yeah. but um, but I don't know a single actor in it. So. I like the Daisy Jones character though; she's a wild, crazy. Yeah, yeah. And... But the part I don't get is the dude, like the, <laughs> the main guy. And isn't it weird? You should be happy like he quits drinking and using drugs. But I'm like, come on, fucking use, do some drugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm get thinking... on, do something. But his, how about his wife? I mean, she's like great. Uh... Well, I'm like. Wait a minute. It's, it's a you really want, good show. You want the crack horror <laughs> singer. <laughs> yeah. But you've got this perfectly harmonious wife at home who loves you and everybody. And, you know, yeah. I mean, he screwed the pooch on that. Great one. show. And the funny, the best part is at the end of the, sh- at the whole thing. Oh, I, I haven't seen the last episode or I haven't seen the last season. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's I, back that up. I off. haven't seen the last right. episode. Okay. Um, But does the keyboard gal and the guitar player finally hook up? can't tell you i mean i know they hooked up but then she shuns him like she won't make it public you know they're on and off again okay okay Um, i felt bad for him but he was also a little wimpy about it yeah no i mean come on yeah have some cojones but the 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 main guy will just say that it's in the end you kind of giggle like no you know you're thinking yeah good show he should have used (laughs) so kevin uh referred you that show yeah k dog referred me to that and uh he he sends me all time books and stuff different music related Mm -hmm. stuff that and bigfoot i don't know if you're interested in that one i haven't watched is that like a local thing no just uh, yeah bigfoot have you heard of it it's sasquatch no no okay i mean that's a good band there's a band uh no that creature no Uh, sasquatch (laughs) oh all All right right. well we'll we'll say that (laughs) Uh, um you know you know what i'm formally until we did DNA. Yep. You know what I am into right now? What? Did you ever watch Sons of Anarchy? Yes. <laughs> what? You just got me back with that. What? You just got me back with that. San- Sons of Anarchy? Yeah, yes. Well, that's the way my son says it. Oh. Anarchy. Sons yeah. of Anarchy. I'm watching I... I'm watching Mayans, the one afterwards. Yeah. And it's it's pretty good. I've heard that, and I just couldn't do it. I tried the first episode, and I just like I'm not. I don't have the juice for it. Well, and there's a lot of uh, seasons, so um, yeah, it's good. I've, I've, yeah. Oh, and Your Honor right now with Brian Cranston on oh, Showtime. Yeah. I, oh. I know about it, but oh, I'd put it right up there with Breaking Bad and no. Better Call Saul. It's one of the. It's top top five easy. I just finished Better Call Saul. Oh. Yeah. I waited till like <laughs> the season six was free on one of my apps, so I've waited this whole time. Well, I thought you got, I thought you bought some fame oh, or something. Did that fall through? No, no, I, that works great. I, I, I just got here? that. Is it hot in here? Just a second. All the questioning. It's like you were a cop. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you don't get a lot of questions on this, do you? Yeah. What are you doing? I don't know. I'm sweating. <laughs> It was cold this morning, but um, this Eastern Oregon weather for you. So, oh, this is yeah. Um, okay, well, I got so many things that we could go over, but I mean, I feel like it would be weird if we didn't talk about cousin Jimmy, and huh. I need you to help articulate this because uh, growing up, we always heard about uh, m- my grandfather's nephew, 
and he was like a legend. We all, every family has that. Every family has the stories about people and you don't even know them. You just hear about them. Yeah. And, um, so we all feel like we knew this gentleman and, uh, recently, uh, he, somehow I got roped into this text chain with my cousin, his mother and our cousin, Jimmy back from Alabama. And, and it's weird, me. it's weird. You're not saying his last name at the same time. Cause it was always Jimmy Roundtree. Jimmy Roundtree. That's right. That's how he said it. He never, yeah. even if we knew. Yeah, you know, it's Jimmy Roundtree calling. <laughs> no, I didn't know that. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah he adored him. He he yeah. loved Jimmy Roundtree. But, um, and vice versa. I had started doing these podcasts, and you that's what it was. You were in contact with him, and you said, I got to get you to, in this thing mm-hmm. so you can um, talk. This guy's done all kinds of stuff. Yeah. And I was like, okay, like what? Where do we how do you even start like well every other story is when he was on a mission pentagon ci secret I, service I, yeah i hear all kinds of stuff and i'm like dating miss alabama i mean the guy has not but every time he came to oregon he he's even telling us it was with the one i met him three times i think and it was a different gal each time i think <laughs> so my connection with him is he bought grandpa the bidet that's right and grandpa made us all like, you got it, you love this thing. And it's like, I, I must have been one of the last holdouts that wouldn't use the bidet. And when I did, well, let me tell you, listeners, I would f- get a no, bidet. No, you were ahead of the curve. Yes. You've been using a bidet for. He he left it to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, you're in you the got... will. 2001. Yeah. yeah. I've had the bidet since <laughs> 01. Um, and, and, and the problem is, is right after we connected with Jimmy, it broke down. So I <laughs> currently don't have a bidet and it's been a really weird situation, but I, I changed things up a little bit at home. Yeah. Um, but no, that, uh, and everybody and, ha- a lot of people have now, now you can go to Costco and get one for under 300 yeah. bucks, two or 300 bucks. I know that one used to be on the one he gave grandpa or got grandpa. First off, I found the receipts. I found everything for it. Naturally. And I thought he left it to me in a will, which is what I've been telling everybody, but <clears throat> have I admitted this? It says right in there, this will be returned to Jimmy Roundtree. Breaking, you heard it here. Yeah. I, well, I don't know if Jimmy's going to, I mean, he's got so many connections. He probably already knows about what you just said, you yeah. know, but. Uh, yeah. I just found it weird, like packaging it up and mailing it to Jimmy Roundtree. Uh, Here's your I'm, bidet back. Yeah. But what I was going to say is, uh, do you remember the MTV Cribs? Yes. Every famous person had the exact same one grandpa yeah. had. That's and, right. And, 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 and over the years, I would tell people I had a bidet and it would always be funny. Yep. But I guarantee you, every time they came to my house, they would, hey, uh, <clears throat> uh, I got to go to the bathroom. I was wondering if, and, and they would want to go use it. Yeah. It was Test a, it out. It was, <laughs> it's a strange well, topic, it, but it, it is. But, but it's it was, so it's so um, clean. I mean, you're just clean. Yeah, and you still use toilet paper. It's just oh, you don't know, just easier. dab off with yeah. a towel. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I would just grab somebody's towel, and <laughs> since I keep mine, <laughs> well, I have all the grandma's towels that right. she left me. Oh, and yeah. grandpa's pajamas. Yeah, I have one pair. Yeah, actually, uh, I almost said less, but Grayson wears uh, his pajamas. You sent a pic of me in those pajamas, or a pair of his pajamas that I forgot about to yeah. save that. You should have that on here. Well, actually, <laughs> you'll have to resend it because I lost those pictures. That's the one thing that didn't transfer over when I lost my phone. I didn't get my photos to transfer over. Ooh. But luckily, they're on the Samsung. Mm, yeah. So, um, anyways... Jimmy so, Roundtree is a good guy. He is. We've and, reconnected with him. Uh, we were wanting to kind of go out, maybe and see him in Alabama. Last connection, maybe one last trip. Yeah, because with, with I the mean, Tollisons and... he's he's a go getter. I mean, the guy still works, kind of. I mean, mm-hmm. he's like a. I mean, I hope I can be that active. I won't be because I'm like fifty and I'm already. He could outbox me. Right? I think. It, well, he was a, he fought George, yeah. George Foreman. I'm right. sure at some point. Uh, I think they might be jealous of mine and your relationship as cousins, my mom and Jimmy. And I think they know that. And so th- have you noticed their connection all of a sudden? They do have a great connection. Yeah. It's cool to, it's been fun for you and I to listen to these. And I've learned a lot uh, that I didn't know about the area here from your mother. It's, you know, it's one of the string texts I've been on that I, um, I'm not like, Oh, come on, get yeah. me off this. I'm like, I read it and then I delete it. Yeah. I don't say anything, but. It's yeah. it's been kind of cool. Have you read the, all the you got your books read yet? 
Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Because well, Jimmy knows that every author there ever is. Jimmy Rounds. He does. Yeah, he's, he's, he's mailed us a bunch of books. And, yep. uh, yeah, I read those ASAP. And um, it, along with my dad's that he sends me. Uh, oh, does so, he? So, yeah, I'm, I'm an avid reader, I would say. Well, when I retire, I'm going to pick it up. Are you? <laughs> yeah. Well, you'll have plenty of time. Yeah. Uh, depending on what you choose to do next. But yep. Probably going to um, re- be a reader. Be a reader. Yeah. Um, you know, one thing I want to touch about, let's it just, it popped in my head. We were, we, we didn't really get into sports, which you're also a sports fanatic. Mm-hmm. You played a lot of sports in school. I mean, you know, you were back up a lot of bench riding, but you, you, you try. Yep. And then, um, you have one more dropped touchdown pass <laughs> than I do. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to, I don't want to, I can't. I only have two and I caught both of them. <laughs> oh, well. It, what, in my was yours just was yours the extra point? No, for two point conversion. No, no, for a touchdown? it was for a touchdown. Yeah, yeah. I didn't call the play. I, I said know. no. I know. Uh, it's so. You. But I always giggle like you did. I mean, you you did that. You've done like different league summer leagues as you've gotten older mm-hmm. through your life. Like yeah. you never stopped really playing sports. At some point, you always have played something. Yeah, a couple years ago, I stopped playing basketball in the old man's league, and that's just because my knee was hurting, and I was the oldest person. Uh, probably on our team for sure, and then in the league, and uh, but yeah, just yeah, I just got wore out, I think. But I mean, I still want to do it. I still want to be active. But I have a foot issue right now, and that's another thing I need to get fixed. And uh, yeah, I love sports. Yeah, um, I just it's, it's passion. We we coached baseball together when I was here in Pendleton. It's terrible. No, it wasn't. It was. It I mean, was, it was fun, but it I was mean, a rite of passage. Uh, you know, um, everybody has to do that. That was Babe Ruth level here. Yeah. And then when I went to Madras, I coached Little League, and then I did high school coaching, but always played basketball, and I've been playing a little pickleball lately. Um, I've never played pickleball. That's I know it's the rage. It is the rage, and that is what ultimately damaged my foot. <laughs> but this guy was – I worked him over. It's the first time I ever played. He's played a bunch, and I beat him. You had And to... he's 10, 12 years younger than me. Right. And so I'm 1-0 and at pickleball. Okay. Um. So yeah, it looks uh, fun. I feel like I would. It's like easy, it. actually. Um, That's not one easy. You know, have you ever played tennis and yeah. you hit the ball? It's so hard to keep it in bounds because yeah. it's just, you know, this you can. It's 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 fun. Um, a little bit better than table tennis, yeah. but golf. As we've been here, I've been uh, asked to go golfing. Um, so oh. I, I was on a golf team last year with some younger kid, younger guys in their thirties, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty. And uh, they're upset with me that I'm leaving Madras because I was supposed to be on their golf team uh, starting next week through July. Um, but nice kids, a um, couple farmers. That's and, fun. That's yeah, fun. it is. It's, I we've, love golfed. It. we've golfed. We've yep. golfed uh, some uh, tournaments together. Mm-hmm. I mean, you've seen me break a club and throw it. Oh, I forgot that. You yeah. snapped a club over your knee. Yeah. The, no, I'm not sure if I've ever add... seen that before except for with you. No, and but here's the best part is you go, Silence, and then he said, "Aren't those graphite?" Like, oh yeah, you <laughs> snapped a graphite club. And then I was, yeah, yeah, no, but that tells you they were a knockoff, some oh, junky yeah. club that I bought, and that's and, why you hit it bad. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I never was good at golf. I had moments. Mm-hmm. I did, I did sometimes. But um, now, have you done a triathlon? I did a half of triathlon. Okay, once. and that's yeah. the one you said you got sick or. I did, yeah, and I even trained for it, and I swam. Everything went great. Transferring onto my bike, and I thought it's a bike. That's the only thing I really didn't practice. <laughs> um, Why? I just because it's a bike. <laughs> Have you ever been on a bike? I bet you could get on a bike right now and ride it. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but I mean, but you can't swim uh, three miles or run right. five miles. But I could ride a bike. I didn't yeah, practice. Anybody can. Yeah. So I go, you know, and you got to ride through twelve. Uh, however many miles i don't know whatever it was but it happened to go right by our house the path and right as where i'm getting close to my house i'm like this is too much i'm cramping up because i'd swam and then rode the bike and kids and everybody's out there banners and i i'm just like looking at them like no get me some meds (laughs) get me some water and then i cramped i cramped up my hammies are all cramped and then people are flying by me and just it's embarrassing and uh I go a little bit further, take a right, go about another mile, and just start uh, throwing oh. up over my handlebars. Oh and my I had a whole nother lap to do. I had to go back to the pool and then come back around again. 
Oh, Lord. I mean, I, I think I was close did to you, last place. I was going to say you placed in the top bottom. Yeah, I did all right. Um, yeah. I got you, off the you bike. You did it. Yeah. Got, well, here's what I did. Afterwards, I went and bought like a $3,000 road bike <laughs> for the next year that I rode maybe one time and then, of course, never did the triad yeah, again. That's a nice bike. Yeah. I'll give you 250 for it. I already sold it. Yeah. I had to sell everything when I had to, when I'm moving to Corvallis. Yeah. Gave up my whole life for my wife. That's what love, that's, hey, we do that every day. I've been married once. Ditto. Yep. And retiring at 52. That's going to be my speech tomorrow. I just don't know how it's going to go over with all the divorced people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, because they're splitting off their purrs. From... Oh, it's just a wreck. Well, that's what's funny is that uh, my purrs is all screwed up just because I bounced around. But, mm -hmm. and, you know, luckily my wife has a, a good retirement system too. But um, then I look around and I'm like, well, you should be loaded. Oh, <laughs> You know, I mean, I, yeah. I, I personally just, you know, but you know, somebody else is getting your money. Yeah. Or a I portion of it. Yeah. No, I've so. been, I've been fortunate. Um, yeah. Still married. Yeah. One job or one career. And, and what's cool is we have somebody in the family we know we can come to for loans and cash when we need money. Cause the rest of us are going to be Ooh, broke. Me? me? Yeah. Huh? You. Oh <laughs> God. I mean, I love it. What I are mean, you looking for? We'll see. Let's talk terms, but I mean. You know, mm. I'll okay. trade you some stuff. I mean, I wouldn't mind getting the record, actually. I know your mom really wants it, but. Well, Jimmy Roundtree's going to send it to her. <laughs> He's still looking for Maybe it. Maybe she'll leave it to me. God, though. doesn't he have some cool stuff that he'll all of a sudden take a picture of? Yeah. I thought I had all the Mason stuff. Mason, Mason stuff. Oh, you, oh, you even have a Mason ring. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. You gave it to me. I, think. I, I Yeah, I had the, I have the thing that they gave him presented him yeah. like you're the greatest thing ever you're the, the grand most racist of all racist <laughs> people <laughs> the mason lodge big heart though <laughs> yeah oh well he didn't see color <laughs> um oh but, tolly yeah talking tolly yeah um yeah give me a topic here buddy I'm just thinking of Tolly right now. <laughs> just dropping the old racist remark. It's oh, hilarious. Well, it wasn't on he purpose. Wasn't, no. no, it was you know. How about when we were fishing? Uh, oh yeah, when we were fishing, and because he, I tell that story every time. I, I mean, oh. again, we could go on multiple times because we didn't even get into the sailboat stuff, which that's going to be another. Are we wrapping up? Not yet. Where's your timer? Um. Well, we have three seconds. No. <laughs> no. 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 Uh, but I just don't want to, you know, I mean, we could go on all freaking night, right? Yeah. I mean, we got the sailboat we'll trip. We'll set it up for the next time. We'll set it up for the next time. But I still want to talk about when you got elevation sickness. We've been, we've done three trips together or three events or what do we call them? Is this including Hood River? Yeah. Where we. Well, on our way here, I had to think. Because we almost died at two, and then something else happened at the third. I couldn't remember what it was, and then I remembered. Yeah. I found a bag of weed, yeah. and we woke up in the same bed at a bed and breakfast the next morning. And then when we checked out, we felt like, what? Why are they? I, like, I, mean, yeah. I mean, a little sore, but it's come scary. on. It's my cousin. <laughs> yeah. It was the only place we could find to stay. Yeah. And we almost bought a bar. We did. We, almost we had fake names. That was fun. That was one of the funnest trips ever, because we, we went into it saying, let's go down. Let's have a night out and let's be other people. Let's say we're other, yeah. you know, we came up with a whole story and we, people oh, bought it. And remember the band? I think we acted like we were promoters and, oh, uh, God, but the other have. two trips we almost died. So I guess we'll save yeah. that for the next time. Yeah. One was a sailboat trip and the other one was mountain climbing. That's a good point. Yeah. So, those are, we'll save those. Yeah. But you know, I had your back on both of them. Did you? <laughs> <laughs> because I saw right where I was about ready to jump off on the boat. And all, you, I just turned around. And you had a, you were having a laugh attack, which I, I've uh, been with people dying, and some right. people laugh, and some people right. like are scared and nervous. You were just giggling, like we're done. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I just almost dove off to swim to shore, but we well, let's. I say we do that next time. All right. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, I appreciate you coming on tonight, uh, today. Well, it's you know it's six o'clock ish, mm -hmm. and. Uh, it's been fun. I feel like we made up for the last time. And then uh, hopefully the best thing is I got everything set up to travel now. So I want to come down and spend some time at the new house mm -hmm. and the new cave that you're building and getting together. And yeah. 
should. And, uh, it's such a cool house. Built in 46. Oh, yeah. It's got a basement, oh. an attic. It's got the whole weird vibe, sounds. A lot of and built-ins and stuff. Everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, the heat is water uh, copper pipes in the ceilings, and, and they click, and it's just nuts. Oh, like a coiled? Yeah. Yeah. And you can see where they've leaked over the years and come through the oh. ceiling. And I'm thinking of my next project, and <laughs> it's awesome. That's cool. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I appreciate. I'm proud of you. I'm. I'm I love you. you. You're my cousin, and I. And I'm so. I have nothing but respect that you. You've had a long career in law enforcement. That's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, some of it was sketchy, but we'll wait. We'll wait. Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to turn in for anything just yet because yeah. I need a loan. To re- I want to retire too. Shit. Yeah, that's true. So we can work something out. But, uh, but yeah, thanks for coming on. Yeah. I want to thank tonight's sponsors, guests, listeners, sponsors, all of you. And uh, I should read it, but I don't have it ready. So you know who you are, and I'll put you up in the uh, on the when I do the editing. So thanks for joining me. Peace out. Keep your nose clean. If it takes both sleeves. Lates. <laughs>